And I'm very excited to be welcoming Chris Kelly via Skype out in Seattle, Washington, coming out with a new book. Now, this is America Invaded, a state-by-state -state guide to fighting on American soil. Chris, welcome to the show. Hey, great to be with you. Well, I'm glad that, you know, you're out in Seattle. We're here in Rhode Island. You know, obviously all eyes are kind of overseas right now in terms of where, where there could be some... Uh, some aggressions taking place, and of course, North Korea making overtures of looking to attack the country here. Nothing probably more timely than uh, aggressions here on American soil. I'm definitely going to want to talk about what happened in Rhode Island, but tell us why you decided to do this book, and I know you've been doing other books as well, but the the state-by-state -state look as to what happened here in this country and where these aggressions have been. Sure. Sure, for us, America Invaded is a state-by-state -state guide on American soil. is a sequel to our earlier book, America Invades, uh, which I wrote with Stuart Laycock, who's an English historian. And we were, in the first book, dealing with America going out, with America's military involvement in almost every country in the world. Uh, but the one country we left out of that book, uh, of America Invades, was the United States itself. Mm. And that's what we up for in this new book, America Invaded, and we covered a, had it divided into states. Uh, every chapter is a different state, including we added a deep district of Columbia as well, which of course uh, the capital was burned by the by the British during the War of 1812. So, so it, it's kind of a, a, a book about fight, uh, fighting all across the United States of America. So Civil War, etc. Yeah. Let's talk about the uh, let's talk about Rhode Island. You know, we like to think that we were the real precursor of the revolution here with the Gatsby affair. Um, let's talk about fighting on Rhode Island soil. Sure. Well, it's interesting that you had, of course, in Rhode Island. Providence has a very strong Italian connection, and that Italian connection goes back to Verrazzano, who actually arrived off the coast of Rhode Island in 1524. Uh, so you have very long-standing uh, Italian connection to Rhode Island. Uh, Rhode Island also, of course, has a very proud naval tradition, as I'm sure you're aware of. Uh, Isaac Hopkins was the very first uh, U.S. naval commander. Uh, the Navy was founded in Rhode Island. Uh, Tom Paul Jones captained a ship called the Providence. Uh, of course, Matthew Perry, uh, who opened up later opened up Japan, fought in, in, during the War of 1812 and was a very prominent uh, naval commander in Rhode Island as well. And talk to us about Rhode Island's uh, reaches. We talked a little bit before you came on the show about where prominent Rhode Islanders actually ended up that maybe Rhode Island folks here might not know about. That's right. There's uh, in, Actually, in the Washington chapter of the book, Washington is my adopted home state, uh, we mentioned Captain Robert Gray, and there's a, a, an area uh, called Gray's Harbor, which is named after uh, Robert Gray. But in, in 1787, uh, who, uh, Robert Gray, uh, who was from Rhode Island, uh, sailed into the Columbia River, uh, which is divided Oregon and Washington State today. Uh, and so he uh, definitely was very important in kind of staking the claim for American ownership of the Northwest. And he was there even before Lewis and Clark arrived uh, in the beginning of the 19th century. So we're just having a little issue. If you're on the phone and you've got the hand over the mic here, you might want to just clear it up because we can hear you, but just want to make sure we hear you nice and clear out there, Chris. Um, sure. Talk with us a little bit. Again, 50 states, fighting on 50 states, you know, as we'd like to think we do know sort of what's happened here in Rhode Island. But if you're a history buff, if someone wants to read this book, what are the real, when you were doing the research, the interesting examples that you maybe came across at other states around the country that really, you know, maybe raised your eyebrows saying, wow, I just did not know. Right. Well, I think that, that the fighting in, uh, and the invasions of ver and various kind of waves of invasion have really kind of shaped our country and shaped our individual states. I mean, take, starting with the very obvious, I mean, Alaska is really different from New York. And it's not just different geographically in terms of climate. But it's also different in the sense that Alaska was invaded differently than New York was. I mean, Alaska was invaded and colonized by the Russians, uh, whereas New York was was invaded and colonized by the Dutch. And so that has had you know impacts you know to this day. Uh, Wall Street in New York, for example, uh, was built by the Dutch to keep the English out. Uh, it didn't exactly work that way, but but that's the origin of the term Wall Street. Uh, you talk about Alaska. 
like native indigenous people of Alaska today, uh, the vast majority of them are neither Protestant nor Catholic, but they're actually Orthodox because of this impact of Russian colonization, even though that ended with, uh, with the America purchasing Russia of Alaska in 1867. And if folks are interested, again, history buffs, again, looking to find this on the shelves. Is it out yet, Chris? Yes, uh, you can find it at AmericaInvaded.com, uh, also on Amazon and Kindle as well, uh, in addition to uh, America Invades, uh, our earlier book as well. Now, I know this is a little off topic because it's not the book you wrote about. Are you concerned about what's going on with North Korea right now? I am, yeah, very much so. I think it's... it's uh, uh, it's very much cause for concern, uh, and, and it, uh, it's a, a real open question. I mean, uh, the uh, uh, North Korean ICBM could potentially reach Seattle, Washington, where, where I'm calling you from, uh, but other, but Honolulu, Anchorage. Now they're talking about targeting Guam, and I think it's it's uh, it's very it's very concerning uh, at the moment. I'm afraid. But you're going to be leaving Seattle shortly. Are you, I believe, is it, is it a 20 state tour to talk about this book? <laughs> oh, please tell me you have a little small child who's coming in around the corner who's going to do something funny. <laughs> I have an eight-year-old dog. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're walking at the door there. I'm afraid. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, so. The, uh, yeah, he wants to come in. Uh, so, <laughs> now he's at my feet. He's good now. Uh, so, Could be uh, a viral media star, you know, make him do something funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can wheeze on command. But, uh, the, uh, no, yeah, I'm going on a tour uh, of, we're kind of a Heartland tour leaving from Seattle. Going, we're going to be on board the Battleship New Jersey on around Labor Day, just on Labor Day. The Battleship Texas in Houston. Uh, and down in Florida, really kind of all across the country, kind of spreading the word about uh, America invaded and, and the way that these invasion, this fighting has, has shaped our, our country in many ways for, for good and for ill, I suppose. Well, you know, as I, we just talked about, um, you know, history, you know, we all learn from history and hopefully history does not repeat itself as we're looking kind of at a global view, but it's always good to look back at what's taking place, and this just sounds like a great read. Would you say, is it for the history buff? Is it the beach read? Is it a combination of both? Who's gonna to wanna to read this book? Uh, I think it's for uh, history folks, but also I like to think of it as a road book, a book that you, you take and you put in your car, and as you and it's, it's a kind of a passport for, uh, for readers to explore our own history on their own. It includes uh, tourist information as well. So I mean, we have things like the uh, you know the Gilbert Stewart birthplace uh, in Saunderstown, Rhode Island, for example, is one of the uh, places on in the in the Rhode Island sites. So we have we kind of invite uh, Americans to explore the history that's all around them, you know, no matter where you live. And here we are on the East Coast. You're on the West Coast. I'm glad you were able to to Skype in, Chris, and let us know a little bit more about the book because. We're here in downtown Providence, but it's always good to get sort of outside the confines of Rhode Island and, again, have a look down and, and look at some history here in this country as, again, we're keeping an eye on global affairs, but to see what had happened here in the U.S. Chris Kelly, America Invaded, I appreciate your taking the time to Skype in today. I wish you well on your book tour. I know you mentioned you might not make it to Rhode Island, but if you do, come say hi. We'd love to do that. I'd love to see the War College and... and uh... Rhode Island's a great state. Love it's, to, love to it's fantastic. Lots of history here. Chris Kelly, I'll let you